Well, what is up, guys? What is up? What is going on? Man, I'm, I've, I've been so out of the game. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I left my damn headphone uh, amplifier on so my headphones don't work because the battery's dead. I don't have a power cord for it. Um, whoever gave it to me, I think it was Josh Jarman, as a matter of fact. Uh, when he gave it to me, we didn't have a power cord and um, had just never thought about going to get a power cord. So it runs off a 9-volt battery. I don't have one. Matter of fact, I need a 9-volt battery for this uh, smoke detector over here because it was beeping at me the other night. I took it down and took the battery out to make it shut the fuck up because it was bugging the crap out of me. So I need to go buy some 9-volt batteries, I guess, is what I'm saying. Um... Good Lord. You know what? I was eating the kicking chicken after work today, which is my normal routine for the most part. Um, I still do that. I haven't done it. In a, well, I don't know. Who, who cares? Kicking chicken. I was there tonight. I was looking back through shows. And I'm like, when is the last time I've done a goddamn show or an episode? <clears throat> the last episode I have done was the Noisy Boy episode. That was... March 1st is when that was recorded, and it was released on March 2nd, on that Friday. What's the date? Right now, it's Friday, but um, I'm going to say, no, it's Friday. It's the 22nd of March. So, what is that? Let's do math. Is that 21 days? No, the second. <laughs> That's 20 days. 20 days! It's been since I've done an episode, recorded an episode. And you know why? I don't know what this episode is going to be called. It might be called the mayor uh, running for mayor episode. It might be called the mayoral episode. It might be called the blood pressure episode part three. It might be called um, um, back at it episode. I don't know what the fuck the episode is going to be called. You're going to see it before you listen to this. You're going to see the name. You're going to see the name of the episode. But... Yeah, it's been a little while, guys. Um, I have not been doing well at all. I have not been feeling well. I don't feel real good right now, to be honest with you. And that's probably because it's I just got off a nine-hour shift. I went to kick and chicken and got something to eat. And now it's almost 1 a.m. in the morning. But I haven't really felt that great today, energy-wise. I felt pretty good otherwise. But So what's been going on? I have a couple notes written down that I've had written down for the past week or so, but I just haven't done an episode because I just have not been feeling well. So, as you recall, I've been having some uh, blood pressure issues. I hate not having my headphones on and not being able to hear what I'm saying into my, although I can hear it. Come on, let's be, let's be real. I have ears. I can hear what I'm saying, but it's nice when I have the headphones on. It just uh, really puts me into the mood. And gets me into this thing, but I don't even know if I know how to do this anymore. It's been so long. But uh, what was I saying? So, yeah, the blood pressure. So, as you know, I was having uh, blood pressure issues. My blood pressure was just spiking like crazy. I've been off of uh, medication for the past two and a half years. After I started the keto diet, I came off of all these medications. Everything was great. And then just out of the blue, I really don't know what the cause of it was or what the uh, what spurred this recent onset of um, blood pressure issues, but things were just spiking like crazy. I was out of control. I was uh, up to day 37 on my running consecutively, and uh, that last night I ran, I think my blood pressure was 160-something over uh, 104, I think, and I got a lot of flack for running on that day. People were just livid with me. Um, that I went out and did that because I could have uh, had a stroke or a heart attack or what have you. So I went on medication. Um, I had been to the ER a couple times, and this was all in a couple past episodes. Went to the ER a couple times. Things were just out of control. I was having a uh, vice-like headache all throughout the day. Extremely blurred vision, uh, increased ringing in the ears, Dizziness, fatigue, lethargy, lethargy, lethargy. I don't, I don't think there's a wrong way to say that. I think you could say lethargy or lethargy. Or is there another way you could say it? Who knows? 
But that, I was tired. I had no energy, uh, which I still don't, to be honest with you. And what else has happened? So a couple ER visits. Uh, they put me on one medication. They 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 changed that medication to a dual medication, like a, a two a double hitter medication. And now, since then, I'm on a third version of that medication, which is a different uh, increased level of one or the other of the two different things. Uh, one is an ACE inhibitor. And uh, one is a diuretic, so there's two things combined. ACE, I don't even know what ACE means. Let's look it up. ACE is the place for the healthy hardware, healthful hardware, man. That's ACE hardware, by the way. ACE inhibitor. Inhibitor. There we go. So an ACE inhibitor is an ant angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors ACE inhibitors medications that slow or inhibit the activity of the enzyme ACE which decreases the production of antiotens I don't know whatever as a result blood vessels enlarge and dilate and blood pressure is reduced so I'm on that and it's combined with a diuretic so the two of them combined are supposed to I don't know help lower blood pressure um, I don't know. We're still trying to dial this thing in. I feel like sometimes my blood pressure is trending down. I'll get in the 130s over 80s. Um, and then all of a sudden, bam, just spikes back up to 160s over 90s. <sighs> Pretty consistently lately, it's been 140s over 80s, uh, sometimes 70s. So it's still just kind of all over the place. I don't know. It hasn't really been a consistent um, blood pressure so far. But with that said, well, while I was on the first two versions of this medication, I was still having the the, the major headaches. I was still having the dizziness, the fogginess, the, uh, the increased blurred vision ringing in the ears. And then I started looking at side effects of what this medication has. And what are the side effects? Well, it's increased double vision. It's uh, ringing in the ears. It's headaches. It's uh, lethargy. Lethargy. One of those two. So I'm thinking to myself, well, maybe I am getting better. Maybe this thing is helping. And maybe I'm just having side effects, which are going on top of these symptoms that I already had. So it's making it look like the symptoms are not going anywhere. I don't know. It's a big mess. But now I believe that did I just do the, I just did the Trump thing now, and I'm not going to do that anymore. Now I feel like the symptoms have lessened in my head. Uh, blood pressure is starting to kind of normalize a little bit. And maybe I'm starting to get back to, to myself. But I still just feel super weak. Like tonight I was just tired as hell. Um, yeah, I call, called out of work a few times. I've just been laying in bed, not feeling like doing anything. And, you know, I, I have this blood condition. I have blood cancer, uh, polycythemia. Excuse me. Excuse me again. And I went back to, excuse me, a third time. I went to the VA this Monday. I had an appointment uh, for to get a phlebotomy because my... Hematocrit levels were like around 49. Last time, last month, a month ago, they were at 52. They want to stay below 45 is what the, the key number is as far as a hematocrit number. I was at 49, so they said, yeah, we need to do a, a phlebotomy. So I went in on Monday to the VA, to the uh, infusion center there, the cancer center. I was getting my blood drawn. They always draw it out, out of this arm because this arm has the best vein in it. And I'm sitting there, I've done it dozens of times so far uh, since uh, 2015, million, a, a bunch of times, and I've never had any problems whatsoever, doesn't matter if I ate, if I didn't eat, if I've hydrated, not hydrated, whatever. I go in, they stick the needle in, they take a pint of blood, thins my blood out, and um, I'm good for uh, however long they say I'm good for until my levels go back up again, and then they have to, to do another one. So I'm in there this time, Monday, uh, they stick me, 
I'm about halfway through the, the phlebotomy and the nurse is just standing there because it goes pretty quickly. My, my blood flows real fast into this thing. I'm, I'm a pretty fast donor, I guess. And I'm about halfway through and I, I, I started feeling just weird. I, I've never felt this before in any, um, and I've given blood for, uh, again, another dozens of years, decades. I've, I've given blood before I found out I had this blood cancer. Now I can't give blood anymore. They take blood, but I can't give blood. They take it, can't give it. So I'm about halfway done, and I started feeling just really, really strange. And I said, do you mind if I get, uh, can I get some water? Can I get a couple glasses of water, a couple cups of water? And kind of like that, I was kind of, I couldn't even get my thoughts out. Um, my brain just got a huge fog. And she said, well, you're almost done, actually. You're you're more than halfway there. If I walk over to get the water, you know, this thing's going to be, this thing's going to overfill. Um, so let's just sit here for a second until this thing fills, and then I'll get you some water afterwards. And I'm like, okay. So I'm sitting there, and I just started feeling like I was, I'd just gone into a tunnel. I looked down at my arms. And I can see the perspiration just building up. My hands, all up my arms, it starts just dripping off of my face. My shirt just starts getting, you know, uh, spots on it where you can see the perspiration coming through my shirt. I just started dripping sweat just out of the blue, just dripping. Every part of my body was dripping sweat just all of a sudden. And next thing you know, I pass out. Um, I get up. They took the, the took the uh, the the needle out. Um, they're patching me up. They're putting some uh, Coban around, sealing up the uh, the hole there in the arm. They start uh, force feeding uh, waters down my down my throat. They take my blood pressure at that point, and my blood pressure is uh, down to 101 over 69, which you know normally it's up 140s, 50s, 60s, over 80s, 90s, sometimes hundreds at the bottom number. So this is like seriously low blood pressure for me. And um, yeah, so I did that. <clears throat> they force fed me like eight different uh, cups of water. They didn't put an IV in me, uh, but they just you know had me drinking water. So I, I rehydrated and they finally uh, decided that I was well enough to go. I stood up, they took my blood pressure again. It was still 10 something over uh, 60 something. They asked me how I felt. I said, you know, I, I feel way better than I did 30 minutes ago or whatever. So they decided I was well enough to go. So I left. I um, I had to walk from, from the infusion center. I was on the fourth floor. I walked down four flights of stairs because uh, I just like to get exercise if I can. I walked down four flights of stairs. I walked out of the VA. I walked to the parking garage, which is about uh, you know eighth of a mile maybe from the front door of the VA center to the parking garage. I was on the fifth floor of the parking garage. I walked up five flights of stairs extremely slowly. I think every floor I paused because I just could not catch my breath. I was just, uh, I was way drained. Obviously, they just drained a pint of blood out of me. And uh, got to my car. I left, and the first thing I did was, uh, well, I had to get gas, so I went and got gas in my car. Um, that's not really part of the story, but I did get gas, and then I said, I'm going to find one of the closest places I can to go get something to eat, and I just need to stuff my face and put a shit ton of food in my body. So I did that. I went to um, Home, Team, Home Team Barbecue and got a three meat plate, which was pork, brisket, and smoked turkey. I got some collard greens and uh, some hash and rice, actually. So I wanted to put a little bit of glue, 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 fuck. I wanted to put a little bit of glucose back into me. Plus, you know, just get some substantial protein and some fats and whatever. So I did that and, and sat there for a good hour and a half because I just, I just still didn't feel quite good. I didn't feel like I wanted to drive back to Somerville from downtown. And then I eventually did. I got up. I drove uh, back to Somerville. I came home. I went straight to bed. And I slept 16 hours. So this was this past Monday. This will come out uh, Friday. I slept for 16 hours straight. Uh, maybe got up a couple times. 
um, to go to the bathroom or whatever. But 16 hours, man, I was just spent. I was out. Uh, that blood draw just took it from me. That's the first time that's ever happened to me. So that was scary. And I haven't really felt great since. So I didn't do, obviously that was on Monday. I slept 16 hours into Tuesday. So I didn't do a Tuesday release. And, you know, the weeks before that, I was just having all the high blood pressure issues and all the head issues. And I just couldn't stand to sit in here, sit in this chair, or sit in front of this computer, talk, whatever. Even just talking as much as I'm talking right now would win me. I mean, it would really just take all the energy out of me. Um, that's why I wasn't even going to work uh, some of the time. So, so that's what's been going on. And I've uh, been recovering uh, all this week. Even uh, Tuesday, I didn't feel great. Wednesday, I didn't feel great. Now, of course, it's Thursday. I got up and went to work tonight. So that's where I'm at. And I was supposed to do uh, a podcast with with a guy, uh, the Fistful of Cash podcast. He runs it over there on, uh, he's on, you know, all the places where you can find podcasts. But he runs an MMA sports betting podcast. I think I've talked about it before. Uh, We've been trying to get together for the next, for the last couple weeks. And it just hadn't happened yet. And it's going to happen. I'm hoping it's going to happen this coming week. uh, Because he's really interested. He wants to get together and do a collaboration and I think it's going to be great. We're going to have a good time. But I just haven't um, just haven't been able to get around to it yet. So I apologize. And I hope you guys can understand. But, man. Um, anyway. So that's what's going on with the blood pressure issue. I think it's getting better. I had that phlebotomy. So I, I, my, my blood uh, levels are back down to where they need to be as far as hematocrit. And the uh, hemoglobin. So hopefully I'm on the upswing. Now, that brings me to my next part. Let me look at my notes here and see what I even had written down. Because I've had this written down for a, a, a little bit. But So the BP update, we just did that. So with all that said, hopefully there's going to be a return to running. Or at least some kind of working out. Because I haven't done... Squat. I went out and did a little bit of yard work uh, this past week uh, before the weekend and uh, did th- about three hours worth. And that just wore me the fuck out, to be honest. But uh, I got to get back out there and do some more, hopefully this Saturday or sometime at the beginning of the week. Springtime has hit. Things are starting to grow and bloom and, and get out of control again. So I got to stay on top of this yard this year because I really let it go. To crap last year. But anyway, return to running, return to some sort of workouts. I've got a uh, Spartan race. I've changed up some of my dates here. I was doing something in July and August. I'm scratching both of those. I'm not doing anything in July. And the August uh, Spartan Beast that I was going to do with my brother in West Virginia, we've now moved that to sometime in November. It's the uh, the Carolina Beast is what we're going to do. Uh, stay kind of here locally where we can just drive up, do a day trip, drive back. So that's what I need to start um, getting prepared for is that Spartan Beast. That's my next uh, big venture. I'm going to do some 5Ks throughout the summer with my brother out there at the Charlestown Landing. And there's a race series that they do out at Blackbot as well on Daniel Island. So I'll be doing those two things and then the Spartan Beast in November. That's the ultimate goal is the November beast. So running is coming back and some hardcore um, Spartan style workouts are coming back as well. But I still just got to have a tad bit more time to kind of get my blood pressure under control before I jump back in to those things. Excuse me again. I had a cheesesteak at uh, Kicking Chicken. It's fantastic. It's really good. A beef cheesesteak. Onions, peppers, mushrooms, had uh, provolone cheese on it. It was really good. So, return to running. Uh, Let's see what else. Uh, BP update, we did that. The square reopening. So, since the last time we've talked, which was March 1st for the Noisy Boy episode, Noisy Boys episode, uh, the square reopened, Hutchinson Square there in downtown Somerville. It reopened on March 2nd. We had a ribbon cutting. Uh, the mayor was out there. Big to do. It started at six and ended at nine. The square was packed. I mean, people have been waiting on this thing for a year and a half, 
And it finally happened. The square reopened, and it looks phenomenal. It looks fantastic. I think everybody is loving it, enjoying it. Every time I go to work, when I do go to work, I can see right out my front windows the entire square, and people, families, kids, dogs, everybody running around out there having a great time, um, enjoying that square. So I think it was well worth the wait and well worth the money, and I think it's going to be a, it was a good investment that needed to happen for downtown Somerville. With that said, we had um, this past weekend, so that was the first event, and the, the big event in the square. This past weekend, we had St. Patty's Day in the square, because it was St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick's, however you want to say it. Um, there's some confusion over that, whether it's Patrick or Patrick, or Patties or Paddies. So uh, get out there and do some research and see what you think is the real story. But yeah, we had St. Patrick's Day weekend. And Saturday was uh, from 10.30 to 6 in the square. They had live music, uh, vendors out there, things going on. The news was out there, all this good stuff. And I tell you what, man, we got destroyed at Homegrown Brewhouse. Uh, Friday and Saturday, but Saturday for sure. I think we went through 15 different kegs on Saturday. It might have been 12. I think we maybe went through 15 for the weekend. I don't know. It was a lot of kegs. And probably did about four times the amount of business that we normally do on a Saturday. It was it was unbelievable. And we had so much help there. <laughs> People were that were just patrons were helping because we were just so behind. We couldn't keep up with glassware. We couldn't keep up with orders. We were running out of stuff left and right. But the business made good money. All the employees made good money. Uh, everybody had a great time. I don't think anybody was disappointed. I think it was... Everybody knew that it was just a big party, and to not get too bent out of shape about it, I, I don't think we had anybody that was disgruntled, and it was a great time. We had a fantastic time. It wore us all out, and we were glad for Sunday to get there when there was no work on Sunday. So, um, But yeah, the square has reopened. Tonight was third Thursday, uh, the third Thursday of every month. They closed down the other side of the street, Little Main, which... Um, I'm hoping to somehow facilitate shutting down both sides of the street of the square for big events like Third Thursday and some other stuff. But big party tonight. Uh, had a, uh, They got a new bandstand there, so they've got live music on the bandstand now. Uh, had all the vendors out there, food trucks, whatever. People were just having a great time. The weather was fantastic. So another great night in the square. The, the square reopening has been a great thing for the town of Somerville. So if you haven't seen it yet, get out there and take a look. I'm sure you'll enjoy it as well. What else we got here? Studio 117. I've talked about it. It's the new listening room in downtown Somerville. It's in the back of Homegrown Brew House. We just had our second show on March 16th, which was Danielle Howe. And wow, what a great show. You know, we expanded the room a little bit. We added some, uh, some different lighting. We built, uh, or we uh, Fleming Moore built a stage for it, a uh, movable stage kind of that you can uh, move it around and configure it in different configurations around the room for depending on what artist is in there. So we had a good turnout for that. And that was the same day as the St. Patty's Day party. So you can imagine that plus the St. Patty's Day thing going on in there. It was a madhouse. But again, I think everybody had a fantastic time. Nobody complained. They all said they enjoy it and they can't wait for the next show. Which, a matter of fact, the next show is 420, April 20th. And that is going to be David Dunning, formerly of Live Bait, the Live Bait band that was here in the, in the 90s. And part of the 2000s, uh, they had to... They had some name conflict back in the 90s, and I think they, they changed their name to 210 Deluxe at one point. And then the band kind of broke up, and people had things to do. David decided he still wanted to do music, and he just renamed it the David Dunning Band. Uh, played a lot of the same songs that Live Bait play, played, but then he had some other new ones that he developed as well. David Dunning, he's going to be playing on 420 at the Listening Room, Studio 117, at Homegrown Brew House. So get out there. You can go to Bummerville.com, get your tickets for that. It's going to be a fantastic show. 
I followed those guys ever since they started. Um, anytime I came back to town and they were playing somewhere, the music farm, the wind jammer, wherever, an outdoor venue, I was there. Uh, my wife was in love with David. I think they even talked on MySpace and, uh, you know, that old uh, video uh, chat system called ICQ back in the day before Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and all these things came about. So I've been following David for a long time. I, I got every single one of the Live Bait albums, the 210 Deluxe albums, and the David Dunning Band albums. I've even seen, seen him since uh, when he's been doing some solo stuff out around town at the Rusty Rudder, uh, Red's Ice House. I'm super stoked and excited about this show on 420. Probably more so than almost anybody that is going to come to the show. I am a fan. So if you get a chance, 420, the show is from 8 to 1030. You can get your tickets at Bummerville.com. That's David Dunning. And I'm not sure who the opener is going to be yet, but we'll have a 45-minute opener before David takes the stage. So get out there. The new listening room in Somerville is fantastic. Um, what else? I got to get to bed, guys, because I still got to put this video together and audio and all that stuff. So it's been a while since I've done this, man. It's a lot of work. I need an intern. I need a partner. I need a co-host, maybe. I don't know. What's next? Um, I've kind of loosely mentioned it. I might be running for mayor. I'm not sure. And that's part of the whole square thing. Um, I want to... One of my first businesses as mayor, if I if I was elected, if I ran, would be to shut down the other side of the Hutchinson Square during big events like Third Thursday, uh, the Azalea Festival, whatever uh, things come up, the tree lighting, um, all these big things. Um, one side of the street is bastardized over the other side of the street. And I think it's unfair. I don't think it gives a fair shot to all the vendors in the square that are there to profit and capitalize and, and make some money, uh, one side gets a bigger share of the pie. And I don't think that's, I don't think that's fair. Um, if you, if you bought real estate there on the square, I think you should have the same fair shake as the other side of the street. So, but yeah, a mayoral, mayoral run may be coming for Mr. Dales. So, if you're interested, if you think that's a good idea, shoot me an email at craftconversationspod at gmail.com. Make a comment on this video on YouTube, um, on the iTunes uh, feed, the Podbean, Spotify, whatever. Give me your thoughts. Let me know what you think. It's, hell, send me a messenger on Facebook, on Instagram. Direct message me. Send it in the, in the public feed. I don't care. Let me know what you think. If you think you would support me, if you think it's a bad idea, if you think there's no way you would ever vote for somebody like me, I want feedback and I want to know what the, what the public thinks because that's going to make a big decision on whether I uh, throw my hat into the ring. I'm about 85%, guys. It's um, you know it's a big undertaking, but I think I have some good ideas. I think I'm a people person. I think... Um, I can manage teams. I think, well, I don't think. I've managed teams. I've managed programs. I've managed projects. I've championed many things. Um, I know how to get things done. I know how to work with people. I know how to collaborate. Uh, I know how to follow. I know how to lead. I've done it all. Uh, 21 years, 21 plus years in the military. Uh, three years as a government contractor, as a program lead, program manager for the program. I have the experience that you need to get things done in Somerville. The town of Somerville needs somebody like me, I think. Somebody uh, with some youth, somebody with some experience, somebody with some some background, somebody that grew up here. You know, I've been in Somerville since 1986. My family's been here since 1986. My mom and dad still live here. My brothers live here. Their families. And uh, this is where my heart is. This is where my home is. So think about it. Tell me what you think. Tell me what you think I should do. And um, we'll get something going. That's all I've got. It's late. I'm tired. I'm still not feeling uh, my best 100%. So I'm going to sign off. We're going to have a guest in here. This will come out tomorrow. It's Friday or today. 
And uh, hopefully we're going to have a guest um, very soon and uh, get a podcast out with the uh, Fistful of Cash guy for one, uh, Dale over there. It's going to be Dale and Dales. Dale and Dales. All right. That is all I have. So with all that said, I will talk to you soon, guys. Talk to you soon.